Well, in response, the Department of Health and Social Care spokesperson said, NHS and care staff do amazing work and we're thankful to those who have chosen to get the vaccine. They are responsible for looking after some of the most vulnerable people, uh, at-risk people. This is about patient safety and making sure people in hospital are protected as much as possible and vaccinations are our best defence against COVID-19. We'll find out the uh, psychological impact of both the person getting the vaccine and those of us with loved ones who may not want unvaccinated people caring for them. I'm joined by psychologist Emma Kenny. Emma, thank you for joining me. Firstly, why do you think that people who are in jobs uh, where it's mandatory to get vaccinated are finding it so difficult to do this? Because, first of all, they don't feel ready. And it's like any medical procedure. If you don't feel ready, you have a right to therefore explore that personally, be informed. And if you come to the conclusion it's not for you, it's not for you. So making something mandatory isn't going to shift a mindset where somebody feels that they aren't in a position where they're ready to actually undergo some kind of procedure. And for these people, particularly younger, those individuals who work in this area, who kind of have got the data and have explored it all and still come to that conclusion, the point of force becomes a position where somebody will obviously want to deny that course of action because it's against their ethics and morals and it makes them feel unsafe in their position because the bigger picture is if you are forced to do something that feels completely against your comfort zone and your will then you accept a behavior that then could become more problematic in the future you have to draw a line sometimes and somewhere in the sand and for these individuals that's the line so it doesn't matter how much coercion and force or even consequence to some degree what matters is personal ethics and morals over one's body and the autonomy people feel around that particular issue so that's why people are saying no and that's why it's really important that we do as much as possible to stop this kind of course of action that will see nearly 100,000 people lose their jobs which is absolute insanity when you think about the NHS and what's required for the NHS to work, which is all mm. those workers. Well, you, you might say that but the, the NHS may, may feel that differently towards it. And in particular, if you look at the numbers of, you know, the spread of COVID within hospitals, which is probably the worst place you can be and the most likely place you're going to catch it, I suppose, from what they're seeing, they might say something different. Now, do you understand that uh, from the other side, though, why people who have loved ones being cared for by unvaccinated people are so worried about a situation where maybe unvaccinated people will be looking after their loved ones? I think that one of the big problems is we've got to find a little bit of reason. And the reason is they've been looking after your loved ones all the way through and we'll be doing to April. And that in itself is a bit of a problem because logic is being denied in this moment. We can't logically say, well, it's all right to work with these individuals till April, but then you lose your jobs when we've got past the winter peak. That's but, just but unfair Emma, and illogical. But, but I do fully understand what you're saying no, about but do you understand members. their also, positioning? Yeah, but I'm just absolutely, whether, not just that. I mean, because I, 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 yeah, I, I can hear from what you're saying, yeah. where your positioning is on this, but I'm just saying that... Um, do, do, oh, my, uh, yeah, my bias. I, I own my bias. My, my yeah, bias fine. as a There's woman. No, you're you're entitled to your yeah, I agree with you. opinion. Yeah. But I'm just wondering... No, and, and, and I agree with you. I'm just... Yeah, absolutely. And, and I appreciate it. it's really important that we do own our bias. And obviously, I've only had my body in control as a woman since pretty much I was born. The reality is women were completely, completely beholden to the way that we were treated prior to that in the past because we didn't have access to things like birth control. So I take it very seriously what we do to our bodies. But I think that it's completely acceptable for people who are deeply traumatised point is, we've had two years of some people genuinely feeling like they might kill their grandma, they might kill their partner, they might kill their sick child. That trauma led by the nudge unit and the behavioural insights, which has genuinely done a horrific amount of psychological damage. Of course, I have empathy with people who can't imagine the fear that they would feel being thought that they might be exposed to this virus. So absolutely, I don't for one minute condemn anyone who feels very, very passionate about wanting everybody vaccinated. Equally, it's important we don't co condemn anybody who feels the opposite. What's important is, I think, at this moment in time with all the division, to recognise what's going to be best for our country. And it will always be personal autonomy. It will always be a great NHS service. And it will be listening to the professionals on both sides. And I think that your channel is great at bringing that balance, whereas I don't think we've had that. So I think a a lot of people have been very traumatised. They're going to need a lot of help getting past that. 